We've spoken about many worlds and many battles on this channel before in our quest to document the many conflicts that made up the Clone Wars. In today's video, we'll be taking a close look at the numerous incidents and battles that took place on Katonomoidia, a purse world of the Trade Federation. During the Clone Wars, both sides did their best to maintain control of the planet, leading to a series of escalating conflicts. Attention, Sergeant on deck! As far as planets went, Katanamoria wasn't anything special. Located in the Katanamoria system in the colony's region, it was a largely aquatic world. Solid land was found in the form of massive rock pillars that extended out of the seas, where grasslands and forests thrived. Bridges built between these pillars housed Katanamoria's bridge cities where the local Namoidians lived. But the planet itself wasn't anything particularly special. Sure, it was famous for its opera, but no matter how much of a musicophile they might be, we'd like to believe no one would wage war over art. Katanamoidia's importance lay less in its astrogeography and more in its political role. You see, Katanamoidia had long been a prominent holding of the Trade Federation, a massive mega corporation that had been growing in power for centuries. Before the Separatist Crisis, the Trade Federation was so influential that it had its own seat in the Senate, where it no doubt pushed for policies that suited its commercial activities. Katanamoidia was also by far the wealthiest of the Namoidian purse worlds, with its bridge cities housing massive treasure vaults owned by powerful Trade Federation executives, including Viceroy Newt Gunray, who lived on the planet. As seen in their conflict with Naboo, the Trade Federation was so powerful that they had the influence to force planets into exclusive contracts and even blockade them. As they expanded their network, however, they found themselves ever more at odds with Republic regulations. When the Separatist crisis broke out, it was the perfect opportunity for the Trade Federation to free itself of restrictive Republic legislation and do business in even scummier ways. Officially, however, they maintained strict neutrality. Newt Gunray, a key figure in the Separatist military, was denounced as an extremist, and the Trade Federation proclaimed they, and by extension all their territories, remained officially neutral. This was purely formality, of course. The Trade Federation kept Newt Gunray as their leader, and was in practice the single largest funder of the CIS droid army, and Namoidia and the Purse Worlds were considered Separatist territory by the Republic military. Still, Kato Namoria kept up appearances, and even as Namoria itself began ceding the space between it and Kuat with hyperspace mines to screw with Republic fleets, Kato Namoria acted as neutral as it could. As you might expect though, that would change over the course of the war. That said, the Republic's first mission to Kato Namoria wasn't a military one, but one of diplomacy, even if it didn't go as smoothly as they would have liked. A few months into the Clone Wars, a bombing on Zara, Katonamoria's capital city, resulted in significant infrastructure damage and scores of dead. With the planet's neutrality threatened, both factions sent emissaries to investigate the bombing. The Republic sent Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi, and the Confederacy of Independent Systems sent Asajj Ventress. When the two emissaries arrived in the city, they were greeted by Minister Alov Iam. Both parties were extremely cautious about each other, attempting to glean whatever information they could about each other while investigating the bombing. Evidence pointed toward an intentional attack. Unfortunately, we don't have many details about what precisely transpired. Sources refer to it as messy business or the incident, and all we know is that Kenobi was surrounded in the Grand Theater of Judgment by Namordian guards and had to be rescued by his former Padawan, Anakin Skywalker. In the aftermath of the incident, Katonomoria was unable to remain neutral. The planet fell under overt separatist control, and over the next few years, there would be many more battles on the planet. In the final year of the Clone Wars, the CIS deployed military forces to the planet in what came to be known as the invasion of Katonomoria. As part of their attack force, the CIS had deployed a Providence-class Dreadnought and six Munificent-class Star Frigates as well as countless scores of Tri-Fighters and Vulture-class Droid Starfighters. 
This prompted a military response from the Republic, which sent Jedi General Anakin Skywalker, his Padawan Ahsoka Tano, and the GAR's 501st Legion. Alongside the two Jedi and clone troopers, the Republic forces were composed of two Actus class light interceptors, one Consular class cruiser, and three Venator class star destroyers, one of which was Skywalker's personal flagship. Clone forces were also supported by six LAATs and Z95 headhunters. When Republic forces exited hyperspace and prepared to assault the Separatist blockade, droid tri fighters were deployed from the Providence class dreadnought, causing serious damage to the Republic fleet. The two Jedi and their forces were nevertheless able to break the blockade and lead a squadron of Z-95s down to the surface, followed by the squadron of LAAT gunships, which were carrying Captain Rex and a unit of clone jetpack troopers. A dogfight broke out in the atmosphere as sabotage droids assaulted their craft, successfully taking out Skywalker's light interceptor and causing him to lose consciousness. Thanks to his Padawan and astromech droid, R2-D2, he was saved. Soon after he recovered, however, he and Tano were recalled to Coruscant to deal with the terrorist attack on the Jedi Temple. Although initially the battle had been going in the Republic's favour, it terminated in an eventual Separatist victory. It's unknown whether or not the Jedi's departure was the catalyst of the Republic's defeat, but the result was that the planet fell once more under Separatist control. After the Separatists took control of Katunamordia, they held the planet until 19 BBY, when the Republic tried to take the planet a second time. Following the Separatist victories in the Core Worlds during Operation Dirge's Lance in 20 BBY, the Republic launched a string of counterattacks, which not only reclaimed many lost Loyalist Core Worlds, but saw Republic forces besiege the CIS's strongholds in the Core. While the Adarim sieges raged elsewhere, this campaign saw widespread success, and by 19 BBY, the only pockets of resistance that remained were the Nemordian purse worlds, Cato Nemordia among them. Many of the Separatist core worlds lost were the headquarters of the Separatist Council factions, and in response, General Grievous had ordered all the members of the Separatist Council to abandon their strongholds and retreat to a rendezvous point in the Outer Rim territories. Newt Gunray, however, retreated to his homeworld of Cato Nemordia with a fleet of Federation warships where he intended to loot his own stronghold before it fell to the Republic. A task force led by Jedi Generals Kenobi and Skywalker were dispatched to the planet. Three Venator-class Star Destroyers commanded by Jen Dodner took on the Trade Federation warships Gunray had brought with him in the planet's upper atmosphere, while the Jedi, accompanied by a legion of clone troopers, led an assault on Gunray's stronghold. With Dodner providing air support and an initial aerial bombardment, the clones attacked the stronghold from the peninsula's northern shores, assaulting the citadel's energy shields. Meanwhile, the Jedi led a smaller force through an orchard, infiltrating the fungus farms under the citadel. Carefully, they made their way up to the upper floors, then locked in on Gunray and his elites, pursuing them as they attempted to reach their shuttle. Despite several complications, including, but not limited to, Kenobi getting high off magic spores, the Republic managed to take the planet. Although Gunray was ultimately able to escape, Katunamordia fell under Republic control once more. This wasn't the end of the conflict on Katunamordia, however. Separatist holdouts remain in the planet's bridge cities, and in the final days of the Clone Wars, additional Republic forces were dispatched to mop them up. As part of the campaign, Jedi General Plo Koon was sent alongside the GAR's 442nd Siege Battalion to complete the conquest of Katunamordia, as the surrender of the Trade Federation holdouts was considered pivotal in ending the war. With him, Plo Koon brought two Venator-class Star Destroyers and many ARC-170 Starfighters, ARRTs, and infantry support platforms. On the Confederacy side, the Separatists fielded three Providence-class Dreadnoughts and many droid Tri-Fighters. Both sides engaged in a series of aerial conflicts both in orbit and within the planetary atmosphere. The details are unclear, but we know the battle was decided in favour of the Republic, who eventually recaptured the planet thanks to Plo Koon and the 440 seconds efforts. However, the Republic victory was short-lived. Not long after their triumph, Order 66 was enacted. Captain Jag of the 442nd received the order to terminate the traitorous Jedi, and following the Chancellor's orders, he executed Plo Koon. Throughout the war, 
Karen Moria changed hands more often than a dollar in his Ultronian club. In the end, we'd go as far to say that no side really won. The only one who came out on top was Palpatine, but then again, that was sort of the entire point of the Clone Wars. But that's just our take on Karen Moria and its long histories of battles during the Clone Wars. But what do you think? Are there any other battles you'd like to hear about? Free to let us know in the comment section below. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.